A walk down memory lane with our very own Jewish encyclopedia. It's Talk of the Town with Isaac Resnick, only on your station, 101.9 High FM. Welcome, good evening. It's a pleasure being in your company. I hope you're sitting back, relaxing, have a lovely hot cup of tea, chocolate, coffee. We have in the studio a very, very special guest, uh, Mr. Jonah David. I'm sure many of you may have heard him. He was on Chayavim twice before in the mornings. It was the first time in the evening. He is a wonderful and magnificent photographer. He's done photographs of all the synagogues throughout the Jewish world. He'll tell us a little bit more about it. It's called Hachayim HaYehudim, Jewish Photo Library. He's got a website. I'll give you all those details later. He'll tell you all about his new project called Jewish Africa, a cultural historical photographic service. Survey. So before um, I welcome uh, Jono, I have to just mention, as usual, those who passed away during the week. Unfortunately, there was Abella Trapido, Tony Britton, there was Bernard Greenstein, Ashney Fisher, A.D. Louis Leibovitz, Councillor or Alderman Alf Woodman, and I'll come back there to later. I'll speak all about him. Dorothy Dodo, Julius Siegel, Annie Betty, uh, Annie Betty Sack. Sheila Levine, Harry Greenberg, Denise Hilary Balsam, Robert Bursix, and David Friedman. We want to wish all the families, Chaim Tovim Marukim, a long and a good laugh, and may they have no further sorrow. On a very happy note, we have one family this week who basically celebrated three Simchas. That was the Schnurb family. Last week I mentioned that Gershon, uh, his wife, that Shane Rivka, Nibolel, gave birth to a son. The Brit Milat took place this morning. Uh, first of all, there was a Sholem Zohar last Friday night. The baby is named Israel Eliyahu, after the, um, the father of Rabbi Shem Bolel. And, of course, we want to wish a hearty muzzle tov to Rabbi Moshe and Jackie Schnurb and Rabbi Shem and Sharon Bolel and to the um, grandfather, Mr. Walter Schnurb, who's come all the way from America, and to the great-grandparents, Linky and Sidney Naiman. And then, of course, tonight, the same Schnurb family, uh, Danny and Shuki Bleeden, are, were married. Uh, the the group take, took place at um, 4.30. And we also want to wish Susan Bleeden and all the Schnurb family a hearty muzzle tov and may they build a Neeman a Beit Yisrael. Now, I have in the studio with me Jonah David, as I mentioned, wonderful photographer. I looked at some of his works. I met him this morning. We went through some of the old shul. He's been through the whole of South Africa, Africa. He'll tell us all about it. Welcome, Jonah. It's a pleasure having you in the studio. And... um, Tell me, uh, how did you get involved in this? It's a magnificent project. I mean, I've always been involved in old synagogues and Jewish history. I visited, I have actually visited every synagogue in South Africa. Well, you've got me beat then. Uh, I haven't quite gotten to all of them, but I have been making good headway. Uh, but first, thanks for inviting me in. It was it's a great, pleasure. great stroke of luck to meet you this morning. Uh, and it's great to be here, an unexpected visit. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to catch up with you, I guess. Um, my ambition with my current project of the Jewish Africa documentation is to get to about 30 countries over the next few years, started last year, um, in uh, about eight trips of six to nine weeks each, and um, working my way to around to about, hopefully, about 30 countries. Uh, so far, I've done mostly in the southern African region. So... Um, yeah, things have been moving fast. You see, when I said I visited every synagogue, you won't be able to for one reason. This was before 1954. There were 44 synagogues in the Free State, known as the Orange Free State. Mm. Now, I don't think there's only four or five are still existing today. The others, may, the buildings may still be there, but they've either turned them, they were sold uh, for churches or to storerooms or whatever it was. You may, as you have mentioned, we discussed this morning, you can come to a a building and you'll find the Magandovit still there or some, but it's used for something else completely yeah. so you won't be able to find all of those and now for example in the old Transvaal as we talk uh, they've closed all those synagogues like Petersburg which is Polakwani today and uh, um, we've got the uh, Whitbank and the Middleburg there was one in Nelspreit uh, there's, I can mention like Ermelo and Amersfoort. These places don't exist anymore. Some of the ex- uh, synagogues were demolished, were sold for something else. So, you know.
you know, that's going to be very difficult. But still, what you've done is actually marvelous in, in finding so many others in other parts of Africa as well. Yeah, well, um, I, I, I know what you mean about all these disappearing synagogues and, um, and the communities. Uh, a good example of what you're talking about is I was in Lichtenberg, Lichtenberg Northwest yes. Province, uh, just the other day with Rabbi Silberhaft, the traveling rabbi. Um, and uh, he, we stopped at the old synagogue there, which is still there physically, but uh, there's a Chinese clothing shop in there. And the funny thing was, right out in front of the entranceway in the pavement is a uh, blue mug and David. And oh. I, th- I thought, you know, the, the the owner of the shop probably has been wondering, what is this and why is it there? Has no idea, I'm sure. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, it's good to see that they're still there, but of course, there's a, it's yeah, it's regrettable that. The yeah, you know, you aren't. mentioned Lichtenberg. There's a, a, there was there is a famous person in South Africa called Stan Schmuckler. Yeah, he no comes one. from Lichtenberg. How does he? And he sends out an email every week called uh, Stan the Good Shabbos Man. Mm. So he comes from there. There was a family there called the Plens, Carly Plen, Sarah Plen. Mm-hmm. She was a Kellen. Her brother was uh, Barney Kellen. He was a reverend at the Pine Street Shul. So a very rich history there as well, and. Um, you know, also in Johannesburg, a lot of the synagogues were sold for uh, churches, as that I mentioned. You see, you're not allowed supposed to sell to a church, so you sell it to a third party, who then can sell it to someone else. Mm. Because what else would they use those premises for? Only, only uh, for churches. And of course, now since the uh, new democracy, we have so many different. A sex and different uh, denominations of the Christian faith mm. who've come in. I'm talking about those come from uh, Ethiopia and Somalia and Nigeria and all that, all established their own different things. Mm. And they're all looking for premises. As mm. a matter of fact, I even got a call yesterday from a um, property uh, estate agent asking me, do I know of anything for sale? So um, we'll come back to one of the ones of which we spoke about this morning, the Berea Hebrew congregation. Now, if you've got any questions for Jonah, where he's been, and he can tell you, he's going to tell us where, which parts of the world he's been as well. You can SMS us on 34519 or you can call us and I'll tell you when to call. Please write down this number. It is 074-654-7335. I'll repeat the number 074-654-7335 and the SMS is 34519. Now, Jono, can you go back and tell us how you really got involved, your first, what motivated you, and your um, involvement in uh, Judaism? Because when you, you come from the States, you're from Washington. Yeah, raised there. I was born in England, uh, but uh, my, clearly my accent gives me away as an American. Um, but I haven't lived in the United States for nearly 20 20- five years now. I was in England for four years, uh, and then I moved to Osaka, Japan, uh, and where I live and I've been since for the last 20 years. Um, and there I teach English at university, and that life has afforded me this uh, travel life and um, my passions of travel and the things that it led me to along the way over the years. The story is quite big, of course, but gotcha. I'll, I'll n- narrow it down very quickly. Uh, and one thing led to another. One travel experience led to another. And, and uh, just being a tourist kind of got dull after a while. I know that sounds spoiled in a sense, but uh, I, I have been spoiled for travel. And I got more attracted to and drawn to Jewish communities where I could make connections with people, and the experiences became much more meaningful. And I, then I, over the years, and as uh, or travel experiences, I should say, I got to go to uh, places in Eastern Europe and started to make connections with my um, historical lineage through the whole experiencing uh, the Holocaust through monuments and going to places like Auschwitz where the history was sort of put upon me as a child and didn't really have a place in my life for two reasons. One, being too young to appreciate it, but two, because, you know, growing up outside of Washington, D.C., you're, you're a world away removed from all of that. I didn't grow up amongst that you know, not by age, but in terms of being able to see the sites. So it became meaningful uh, and, and made my Judaism more uh, real and alive. And, and so my photographs uh, and my interest in photographs just grew really from there. And my photographic skills, you know, have improved over the years. And, uh, and that basically leads me up to about a year or so ago when I started to think about Jewish Africa 
And, uh, and I kicked off this project last year after quite a bit of planning and reaching out to people. Now, you and, say you live in, uh, in Japan. Yeah. Did you ever um, meet or hear of a rabbi, Marvin Takawa? I have not. No, he, would, he lived in a place called Kobe. Oh, Kobe, Kobe actually, yes, pronunciation, Kobe. is uh, the next town over from Osaka, where I live. It's yes. about a 25-minute yes. train He wrote a, a book called The Fugu Plan. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No, I have not heard of that. Uh, I'll, well, I'll explain to and the listeners. And in 20 years in Japan, I've not had fugu either. <laughs> I don't know. Well, out there fugu is a very, very rare delicacy. Uh, well, it's it highly poisonous. Highly poisonous. You have to be licensed it's, to prepare it. Yeah, um, you have to. If prepared correctly, it yeah. is the most unbelievable delicacy. This is what they say. But <laughs> if you touch it or you it, it is 1,000 times more the, uh, poisonous than strychnine. That's how dangerous it is. But that's the uh, the fugu. Mm. And I'll, the history of that I'll tell about for the listeners later why he, he wrote that book. Because the um, the Germans were going to, uh, the um, Japanese were going to bring in a whole lot of Jews to try and develop uh, Japan just before the First uh, Second World War. Yes, he writes in all that book. I'll, I'll, I'll let you see it. Right. Now, also, if you want to see some magnificent photographs, I suggest you get onto the website of uh, Jonah David, which is www.jewishphotolibrary.com. I repeat that, www.jewishphotolibrary.com. Let's add one more W in the front there. Um, w, 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 yes, well, they know, <laughs> they, they know that. And you'll see something like this. Now, just tell us some of the most exotic, or what, what do you think you found the most exciting uh, synagogues that you found that... Uh, um, well, you, did you find a synagogue in the Co- Kobe? Uh, yes, Kobe? there is a synagogue, yes. a synagogue there. It was built in the 1970s. It's, uh, no. it's not the most attractive edifice in the world, uh, but it's a functioning synagogue. Uh, Co- Tokyo, which is quite a bit distance from where I live, uh, they do have a brand new synagogue. Uh, it was opened a few years ago. It was built on the same site of, uh, of another synagogue that was just in very bad condition. They took that down, and on the same site, they re- rebuilt a new but in modern Kobe, facility. Kobe, they had a yeshiva there. Because, uh, I'm not familiar yes, with that. That might have been before why. my time. There was a, there was a Rabbi Chaim Shemuel Levitz of the Miriam Yeshiva in Europe. And just before the Second World War, or just or maybe, he moved his whole Yeshiva to Kobe in Japan. Mm-hmm. And then they moved it to Shanghai in China. So have you got any uh, um, photographs of shuls in China? Because that's also a very old one then. In Shanghai and uh, Hong Beijing. Kong. Uh, no, I have been to Beijing, but I don't have photographs. Uh, I do have a, a a wish to go back to um, to several places through China and other places in 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 Asia uh, right. that have developed recently, oh, and some of them quite modern due to Chabad houses that have have been established. Uh, so we're not talking about necessarily traditional old. Yes, synagogues. right. Okay, yes, but okay, yeah. Because as I said, they did have a, a yeshiva there as well in Shanghai, and a lot of the. Um, the rabbis, two rabbis in Johannesburg, their parents, still being alive, came, were studied in that yeshiva. There's a Rabbi Goldman yeah. of the Sydney Highlands North Hebrew Congregation and also Rabbi, um, Rabbi Weinberg. Also, uh, uh, from his father also went over there. And there was a famous cantor called David Bagley who also went there and survived. Mm. And then a family in Johannesburg established a very big electrical business called the Mashovsky family. Their parents also landed there. And that's how they were saved. Mm. Right. Well, on my my, uh, Africa project, I'm looking forward to going to the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, in Kinshasa, the capital. There's a yeshiva there yes, currently, correct, yes. which really threw me for a loop. I wouldn't have expected that, but there you go. Yes. Now, what other? Now, I asked you earlier. We're going to take a break in a few minutes. What uh, exciting and what? Uh, let's use the word exotic. Uh, places have you uh, found? You know, you know, in a synagogue, uh, it's, it's right, but something that really uh, uh, stimulated, made you three. Really this is uh, well. You know, that's, there's a lot, but one that perhaps jumps to my mind is in Suriname, uh, which is a relatively obscure country in the northeast coast of South America. There's a long history of Judaism, a Jewish uh, history there, well over 400 years. Um, they have in the capital city of Paramaribo, which the capital, the central part of the city is a World Heritage Site, uh, because the entire central part of the city is built out of wood. The wooden city and the synagogue is also built out of wood, and it also has a, one, a unique sand-covered floor, right. which is only one of about four synagogues in the Caribbean and there um, with a sand floor. Right. Uh, so 
I guess you could say that was quite exotic, but I don't know if I personally used that word, but just exotic in the sense that it's uh, quite different. And also it's a place that, that, you know, I don't meet too many people who have been there. Right. And, and, and Jonah, and have you been to uh, Ethiopia? I have not. That's certainly on the list you'll for this trip, quite the a Africa few trip. Old synagogues going more than 400 years. Mm-hmm. Because don't forget that all those Ethiopian Jews who came to, uh, known as the Falashas, yeah. they were brought out, to, brought to Israel, you know, in that Operation Magic Carpet. Uh, so um, if you, um, if, I'm sure you'll be there. Now, we're taking a break. We're back in a few moments. You're listening to Talk of the Town with Isaac Resnick on 101.9 High FM. Uh, welcome back. If you just joined in, I have in the studio with me Jonah David, a world-renowned photographer who's got a magnificent project. It's called Hachayim HaYehudim, a Jewish Photo Library. And as I said, if you want to look at some of these beautiful photographs, get on to www. JewishPhotoLibrary.com. Uh, Jonah is telling us all about his travels, where he's been, and now he's doing a, a tour, a complete tour of Africa. So, where in Africa, other than South Africa, have you also been to, and what have you taken? Well, thus far for my project, uh, and again, just to remind uh, the listeners, um, I kicked off this Jewish Africa Cultural and Historical Photographic Survey uh, last year. And um, so thus far, I've been here, I've been across South Africa, I've been here, this is my third time in the, in the last calendar year. Uh, I've been in Namibia, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Mozambique, uh, Mauritius, and Botswana just the other day. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually heading to Swaziland for two days, uh, head, going there with Rabbi Silberhaft, the ra- traveling rabbi. Um, and next week, uh, the week after next, I should say, I'm going to Kenya for a week and then from there to Uganda. Right. Uh, and that'll end this particular leg, and then um, that's it. So I'm working, uh, you know, working my way uh, north. Yes. It seems. And you haven't done any um, anything in the Middle East, like for example. Well, like, Israel, Jordan, yeah, Syria. Yeah, yeah. I do have photos yes. from there. But sure. I'm talking like say Iraq, Iran. No, that no. region and more Central Asia. I have not been and to Algeria. No, it's on my list, but uh, Morocco. That's oh, definitely on the list. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I have been to Morocco. I do have some old rubbishy photos from when I went there years ago and before I was kind of doing what I'm doing yes, now. Because but there you'll find some very old. Oh yeah, old synagogues. Hundreds of them across the country. Of them in, yeah, and Libya. I have been to Libya. Uh, that was oh, twelve years ago or so. I have a few photos from one of the Commonwealth cemeteries. Right. Um, but the you know there was a synagogue. Um, in the old town, which I tried to find when I was there that time. I could not. Um, so I'm working on that. Yes. But it's not only synagogues that you No, no, in. by no means. Unfortunately, in places like Libya or where these communities, where there literally is no, are no more Jews, uh, it might be a case where I'm just going to photograph an old cemetery or an old uh, Jewish building or uh, an old synagogue, and that will be it. But no, the, the I, my main aim is to try to really capture the cultural and spiritual life, uh, living life of Jewish Africa. And also, and in, in Europe, Spain. Have you been to Spain? Yeah, but that's not part of Africa. So I'm not. <laughs> no, 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 but I said not. I know. I said not Africa. Right. Yeah. Spain, because there you must have some very rich his, uh, Jewish history. But don't forget there was the Inquisition. But I'm sure some of the old uh, Jewish places of worship and uh, cemeteries are still there today. Or? Oh, sure. I, I, I don't. I haven't really. Uh, I only have a few. Uh, sites in my uh, opus from uh, Spain. Yes. Uh, but I have a great deal from Eastern Europe, um, the Baltics in particular, uh, Poland, um, the Caribbean, uh, certainly now Southern Africa, um, Central America. Um, Rhodes Island? A- Asia, Rhodes Island? No, I haven't been, been there. Because that's where most of all the Sephardi Jews went to, so you know, so Rhodes Island, Gibraltar right. as well. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm doing. I'm a one man show. I'm trying. I'm doing the I'm best not, I can. <laughs> no, we're just trying to find out. Yeah, no, I appreciate I mean, you've been doing that. This yeah, for yeah. How many? Yeah. Twelve years. Well, well, more in in a technical sense, but yes. it's sort of in the depth and commitment that I'm doing it at now. Uh, yeah, I suppose more like yeah. a decade. Now, have you got any questions for Jono? Please SMS us on three four five one nine, or you can call us on o seven four. Six five four seven double three five, and you can call now because I'm going to have the line open now. And while uh, we're waiting for any calls, we're going to discuss now what I 
uh, told um, Joan this morning about the Herman Wald uh, monument, you know, at West Park Cemetery, the six of fraud, the, the um, a monument to the uh, six million who were killed. But Herman Wald also did two magnificent other sculptures. The one was at Sandringham Gardens, which I showed uh, Jono as he, before he came, we came on the air, of that famous man doing a kriya. Um, now, this was removed, and I'm not going to the history because it was very controversial, from Sandringham Gardens a few years ago. And it was open, it unveiled by late Chief Rabbi Louis Rabinovitz. And a lot of people said, you know, you're not allowed to have a, a, a statue. We don't, you know, we don't have it. Uh, it's against Judaism, one of the Ten Commandments. But Louis Rabinovitz thought and thought about it. And he says, I'm unveiling it because it is a statue in memory of the martyrs of European jury. And it's a man doing Kriya, tearing his shirt. And present there were all the other rabbis of that era, rabbis Rosenzweig, Alloy, and Neifeld. Um, the list is endless because I've got a, p- a photograph from there. So if they thought it wasn't correct, they would have also objected. But at below the statue, there was some wording. And uh, this wording applied to uh, the aged home. And I want uh, Jonah to know this, and I'm going to quote it verbatim. And it read as follows. Remember man as I am now, so you will be. As you are now, so once was I. Therefore, scorn not me, rather come suckle me. S-U-C-C-O-U-R. In other words, I'm old. Don't laugh at me because I was also young like you. And you're young, you're also going to get old. And I don't know what's happened to that plaque. But this, this now statue this, uh, of this man turning Kriya is now in the gardens of the Garden Synagogue in Cape Town. The son, Her- uh, Herman Wald, son Louis Wald, had it removed there. And it's standing just outside the old museum there. You've got the Cape Town Museum. So if you next time go down to Cape Town, um, uh, Jonah, you'll be able to see it. It is there. And then Herman Wald also, I've got the picture in front of me and I'm showing it to Jonah, the most magnificent wings of an angel, and I'm sure many of our listeners know, of the Berea Shul, the new Berea Shul, which was built in 67, where the wings adorn the Aran Kodesh, and you had all those gold chains hanging down there. And these were taken down, and um, they're also now in Cape Town. They're lying in storage there. And they're going to be brought up. I have been told they're building a new shul. I'm sure I've been told this. I'm not can't verify it for the Mahasha shul. And they're going to put those wings of the angel there. And it is magnificent uh, sculpture. This is really something. It was done in bronze. Uh, I've got color photographs of it, and I've actually offered to uh, lend um, Jono a video of the Berea shul. It's empty before it was closed. So everything is intact. The Oren Kodesh, all the original seats, the late Rabbi Alloy's seat where he sat and the bima where Mandel sang from. And I'll, it's, it's really it's something to see. You don't get a synagogue. I would go far to say it's one of the most beautiful synagogues in the world because there's no other synagogue had this this thing. And that was done by Herman Wald. And it, unfortunately, if you go there today, of course it was sold to a church. Um, it's 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 very hard it's very heartbreaking when you go in there. So I'll let you have that video as well. I've also shown um, Jonah a picture here of the old Jepistan Hebrew congregation, uh, which is in Jepi also sold a beautiful interior. Now, just want to mention for you the interior and the Oran coach the Ark is exactly the same as the great synagogue in Warren Street on a much smaller scale. They just copied it. And the seats in the old Jeppe Shul, you can see here, came from the very first synagogue in Johannesburg called the Vatwaterstrand Hebrew Congregation, which was in President Street in town. And when they closed that shul and they amalgamated with the Johannesburg Hebrew to become the United Hebrew in 1914, they gave the seats to the Jeppe Shul, which was rebuilt in 1923. So that's some interesting things for you. And as I said, unfortunately, you'll, you'll be able to go around. You'll see a lot of things, but you won't be able to 
see the old places like this today. But I do have photographs. I've took photographs of the closing when they did the Yeovil Shul, when they did the Eitz Chaim Shul. It's, it's, you have to do this because you, if you don't know your past, you don't have a future. So, Jonah, can you tell me some other, uh, like in America, what, what synagogues did you find there very old? Isn't there one in Philadelphia is one of the oldest, I've been told? Uh, I can't answer to that. I, about growing up in Washington and Philadelphia uh, being really only a couple of hours away, would you believe it? I've never actually been there. So I, I can't comment on I, I that I believe there's a very, yeah. very old synagogue in Philadelphia, one of the oldest uh, in the I'm United sure States. I'm sure there is. One of the, I think the oldest in the continental uh, contiguous United States is in Rhode Island. Rhode Island, yeah. yes. yes. Um, and under the U.S. flag, uh, I think it's the St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, right. which also has a sand floor. And in South America... The oldest synagogue? Yes. Uh, I believe it's uh, one from Suriname. Um, I, I, I could be very well mistaken on that, but right. there are some old synagogues there, a few old synagogues. Uh, and there is one that is only foundations, which is in the jungle, uh, a couple of hours south of the uh, main town. Now, if you've got any questions, if you want to ask Jonah anything, please, the line is open now. Please phone now, 074-654-7335 or SMS us on 34519. And Canada? Did you find any very old ones in Canada? Well, again, there I have not traveled extensively. Oh. I do have some in, from Montreal. Um, where else? Um, Toronto. Toronto. Uh, and I did photograph the oldest synagogue in uh, Toronto. The, what is the name? Knesset. Uh, uh, it's slipping my mind. Kinesis, Kinesis yeah, something. Right. Um, it's uh, called the. Uh, has an, a nickname. Um, I'm drawing a blank here, but but I have photographed that, and it is the oldest shul in Toronto. Uh, yes, and now I, and I'm just going to go skip to Europe. I know. Mm. Uh, what about say France? Again, they're limited. Um, my photos are from Europe, or prim- I do have a few from Paris, a few from the south of France, yes. but primarily my my uh, European collection is more of the eastern. Part of the continent. Oh right, okay. Mm. And in England, uh, Scotland, uh, good, Wales. Uh, I have quite a few in uh, from London, uh, L- around London, and also from the town where I was born, Stoke on Trent. Um, uh, there's a little syn- little special synagogue uh, that was built within the grounds of the. It's a unique situation within the grounds of the cemetery there, uh, but it's um, it was built uh, ten years ago or so uh, where the Ohel used to be. And uh, the community dwindled, as so many do, um, and they built a synagogue there. But the reason they were able to get away with that, because you can't, you know, access a a synagogue through a cemetery, you enter the synagogue directly from a side street. Um, So uh, that's a special synagogue, but it's new. Yes, and the Bevis Marks in London. Oh, yeah, that's 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 the oldest. That's beautiful. That's that's old. That's That's more than 300 years. Yeah, that's the oldest in London, I believe. That's the oldest in London, yes. Yes. Very special. Very special. And in uh, Scotland, there's a very old one in Edinburgh as well. I've been to Scotland, but I haven't photographed. You haven't photographed. And yeah. Ireland, you also haven't photographed. I've been to Ireland, but have not photographed. Okay. There. <laughs> no. You're just, hitting I'm, all the places I haven't been I, to. I, no, I'm just asking you because I'm, <laughs> I've been to most of these places. And I, that's the yeah. first thing I do is to look for synagogues. Right. That's the first thing. Well, you now do. that's what I do. But you've yeah. got a few years on me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you um, want to uh, get onto the website, I'll repeat it again. That's Jono David's website. A magnificent website. Some beautiful photographs. It is www, and it's jewishphotolibrary.com. Um, if there's anything you want to ask, because Jonah has to leave in a few moments, and I want to discuss um, tomorrow night, uh, we have a very, very special yacht site. I'll come back to the moment. And um, please call us on 74 Six five four seven double three five, or SMS us on 34519. I think our listeners are all glued to the set, and they just don't want to, um, you know, disturb the piece here. Sure, but you've got the, uh, the signal going. The signal going. <laughs> no, but usually. So, um, Jono, really, I, I'm fascinated by this, and I will – you're leaving tomorrow for Swaziland. Yeah, but just for two nights, and yes. then I'm coming back to Joburg, and then on the the next week I'm going to uh, to Kenya for a week, Uganda. Yes, then I'll uh, I'll I'll give you two days, and I'll contact you to uh, let you have this video on the Berea Sure, okay. I'd like you to see it. Just oh, thank to, you to see it. And um, I remember we did the first um, 
a funeral in uh, Swaziland of, of a, a gentleman called Mr. Diamond. Well, I'm going there speaker. with Rabbi Silberhaf, again, traveling rabbi. I'm sure many of your listeners out there know who he is. Yes, of course. And he is such a great man. He's been such a champion and helper of uh, of my project. Yes. And I don't have even the, the words to, to explain how grateful I am I, to him. I, I know. Uh, we're going tomorrow. We're opening a, 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 a library that's being named after him uh, in a school. So it'll be a special project to uh, right. to go with him and have the honor. Of taking some photos, and then for I'm him. sure you were with him a few weeks ago, or where they went to Maputo and they, they reopened the synagogue there. I was there in uh, February, but oh, I'm yes. not sure of the event. You're oh, there was to. A, a synagogue there, yeah, which reopened again in just Maputo. recently, just recently. How recent? Yes, just about I, I would say about about two months ago. Oh, or something. Yeah, well, that's since I've been there, I guess. You know, of yeah. course, Maputo, Maputo was mm. known as Lor- uh, Lorenzo Marx mm. before we uh, changed his name. You see. So uh, there was a very big Jewish community there, mm. uh, but it's um, uh, today it's about a hundred people. Yeah, hundred people. Most yeah. mostly expats. Yeah, m- mostly yeah. expats. Yeah, yeah, yes. But a and good a, crowd, right? And mm. then of course there was Wunduk and uh, mm. and there's um, the Swakopmund and Kirtman's Whoop, mm. and uh, I mean the Jewish community was spread through the whole of Southern Africa. Mm. Right, and of course in Southwest Africa, which is now in Namibia, there a lot of the Jewish community came from Germany because it was a German, pro- a German colonial uh, uh, pro- province that we mm, called it. Sure, they, it was for, known as German East Africa. Mm, sure, and you know you allude to that part West of Africa. that the, 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 that part of being settled by a lot of uh, German Jews. German and Jews. here, of course, in South Africa, there's such a lineage to Lithuania. Lithuanian. And I encourage people who are listening uh, out there to, if you have that Lithuanian heritage and you have not had the opportunity to go to Lithuania and to, across the Baltics, go. Uh, it's, it's, it's very rewarding. I'm sure it would be a very uh, emotional trip, but it's a, 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 it's just beautifully uh, protected, and uh, the the Lithuanian government has a consortium of uh, museums, and they're really doing wonderful things with education and uh, documentation. So yes. I really push um, people many, to go. Many many South Africans go mm. to. They've just had a trip to Lithuania, huh? uh, quite a few tours a few weeks ago. And we have a chap called Hugh Reichlin who's been, and he talks about it. He gives a show. So we're taking a break. We're back in a moment. You're listening to Talk of the Town with Isaac Resnick on 101.9 High FM. Welcome to Talk of the Town. Your host, Isaac Resnick. I hope you're sitting back and enjoying. I had in the studio with me Jonah David, a wonderful, wonderful a photographer. I've given you his website. I'll repeat it again. He's done photographs of all the old Jewish synagogues, shuls, and other places of Jewish interest throughout the Jewish world. And uh, it is Hachayim Hayuhidim Jewish Photo Library, and it's www.jewishphotolibrary.com. And I can really recommend it. It is really magnificent. And um, please, if you can, if you want to uh, be in contact with uh, Jono, you can send me an email at Isaac at Chai. Dot co dot zm or Isaac at high fm dot com. Jonah, it's been a pleasure being with you. I'll be in contact with you after you return from Swaziland, and um, we can discuss further then. And okay, I, thank you, Isaac. I really appreciate your welcome, and uh, it was a great pleasure to meet you. Pleasure Thanks having for the opportunity. It's a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Go well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, I mentioned there's a very f- uh, notable your side tomorrow night and that is the 9th of Elul late Chief Rabbi Cyril Harris remember he passed away 8 years ago in 2005 is your side tomorrow night and I just want to speak a little bit about uh, Rabbi Harris I was going to um, try and get his son on the line from London Michael but unfortunately we have a technical problem with the telephones and also, um, I had a DVD to play uh, with Rabbi Harris speaking. Um, I, I don't know why it wasn't loaded. There must have been another problem, but we will try and play it on a Friday morning. Now, Rabbi Harris arrived in South Africa in 1988. He was inducted at the Great Park Synagogue, the Great Synagogue, rather, of Ormond Street. Three chief rabbis were present. The former chief rabbi uh, Bernard Moses Casper, and also rabbi chief rabbi Lord Emmanuel Jacobowitz, and it was an impressive ceremony. It was held in March 1988, 
uh, they, they were hanging from the aisles. You couldn't get a seat. That's how full the shul was. And um, Rabbi Harris then became so popular, and I said, he is a man for all seasons. And actually, he gave me that clue because he loved a movie called A Man for All Seasons, uh, which starred Paul Schofield. I'm sure many of you do remember that. He got very involved in the community. He was a traveling rabbi. He, I don't think he ever spent more than one or two Shabbat taught at home uh, in one particular month. He traveled the length and breadth of South Africa. He went from, as he used to say, from Gheorgh or George all the way to Harare. He would go to Maputo. He would go to Southwest Africa. He would walk for miles. He lived in Highland. First, he lived in St. John's Road there in, um, in Berea. And he would walk to the Great Synagogue, which is down at the bottom in Volman Street Shul. And then he would also walk to Sydenham Highlands North. He'd walk to Waverley. He'd walk to Oxford. He even spent uh, Shabbos walking down to uh, the, the Lion Shul in Dorfantine. And you know, the minion used to start there at six o'clock in the morning. But he was, he loved it. He went from, he knew every shul in South Africa. He went to every shul. Unfortunately, um, he retired in 2003. And um, a year later, he became ill. He retired in Hermanus, and he passed away there. Um, he was he's buried in Jerusalem. I had the um, privilege of attending the uh, funeral in Jerusalem, and um, uh, it was really something very emotional. And we I want to extend to his um, uh, rabbit, his wife, his widow, and Harris. As uh, hearty Aruches uh, Yomim, and to his sons, uh, Rabbi Michael Harris and Jonathan, um, you know it's the your side. So we wish them all a long life, and I'm sure on behalf of the whole Jewish community as well. Now the other important your sites this week well, was fourth of Elul, which was um, three days ago. Was Rebbe Meir Simcha Hakohen, 1843 to 1926, and I'm sure many of you know he is known as the Rov of Dvinks, the Or Samayach, and of course we have this wonderful institution in Johannesburg, the Or Samayach. And then there was also on the sixth of Ul Elul two days ago, Rabbi Yecheskel Sarna, 1890 to 1969, the Rosh Yeshiva of Hebron. And then another very well-known rabbi on the 6th of Elul, Reb Ario Leib Lopian, 1910 to 1979. He was the Rosh Hashiva of Gates Ahead. So these are the one, two, three, four important yard sites this week. And um, as I said, Rabbi Harris's yard site will be tomorrow night, and that's the 9th of Elul. Now, some events that took place. Um, on this day in 1968, Tito, do you remember Tito? He was the uh, Prime Minister of Czechoslovakia. Tito says in Prague, Arabs must accept Israel, urges Israel, uh, and urges Israel's withdrawal. <coughs> Swiss banks offer 1.25 billion settlement agreement for Holocaust-era claims. This was in 1962. And then Eisenhower, remember he was the, the General Eisenhower, he was the Supreme Commander during the Second World War. He then became the uh, President of the United States in 1958. Eisenhower presents Middle East program, but omits to mention Israel. And you know, Eisenhower can be accredited for one thing. Remember when they came into Europe and they came to all the camps uh, like Treblinka and Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen and they found these horrific, horrific sites. Eisenhower insisted that the military photographers photograph and record every single site to the detail because he says otherwise this will all be gone forgotten in history and remember there was a i won't mention the name a book came out or a general mentioned the six million did not die and had it not been for us now you wouldn't have all this proof today uh, he made sure that everything was recorded and then in 1978 chief safari rabbi of israel issues 
test tube baby ruling 1978 that it was uh, uh, halakhically correct. And then in 1938 in Barcelona, Spanish Jews open rabbinic court first time since the Inquisition in 1938. In other words, after 400 years, a, a Beth Din was allowed to be opened in Spain, Barcelona. And in 1978, Israel and the United States signed an aviation pact lowering airfare flights. And then finally, in 1949, Herzl returned and reburied in Jerusalem. Remember, he was buried, he died in, um, in Basel, Switzerland, and they brought his body, it was buried on Mount Herzl in Jerusalem. So, uh, unfortunately, our internet is down, so we can't get SMSs, and uh, there's a problem with the telephones. Now, I'm going to um, just give you what's happening this Sunday, the 11th, at the Rabbi Cyril Harris Communal Center. There's the popular BB series, The Private Life of a Masterpiece, Auguste Renoir and Vincent von, Kroch, von Gogh. It's at 7.30. As I said, the 11th of August, the price is 70 Rand, including refreshments. And you can call either Hazel and Rene on 011 728 8088 or 83078. Now, I mentioned right at the beginning when we started that Alderman Elf Whitman passed away. Now, he was one of the last, they're still alive, too, I'll mention in a minute, of all those famous. Jewish city councillors. And remember, and I don't think it's how many of you can remember, there were 22 Jewish city councillors. Every other year or every second or third year for a continuous period from the 1950s onward. And I'm going to mention them all to you. Now, Alf Woodman was mayor of Johannesburg. He then became a member of the provincial council. By the way, he's an attorney uh, by profession. Um, his wife, Bex, passed away a few years ago. And then he became a member of parliament with quite a lot of all his colleagues. I'll, I'll mention them in a moment as well. Now, the two oldest, well, I don't say oldest, but two surviving mayors of Johannesburg, Jewish mayors, are one living in Israel. His name is Alan Gad. And the other one in Johannesburg is Maggot. Ernie, uh, um, m m yes, Alderman Maggot as well. Uh, now, those mayors, that I'm, now I'm thinking off, I'm going off, and I'm, I, I may leave out one or two, but I'm just from memory. There was a Harry Groman, the very first one, and there was a Max Langerman, and there was a Mr. Freeman, he was the uncle of the late Lou Freeman who passed away a few weeks ago. And then there was Jack Mincer. Remember there was the Mincer parking ground near the Union grounds. And then there was Max Goodman. Now Max Goodman was a brother-in-law of Alf Woodman. And Max Goodman was also the chairman of the, when they built and started the first the Parkview um, Greenside Hebrew uh, congregation And you know if you go down Sylvia Pass Towards the end they called it the Goodman Driver That was Max Goodman And then there was a very famous um, Attorney who became A mayor, city councillor In 1952 well, I mentioned that um, And his name was Jaime Miller He came from America But he settled in South Africa And Jaime Miller When he was mayor Remember Queen Elizabeth, that's the present Queen of England, was crowned queen, and they built an, a, a retirement village called Queenshaven, and that was Jaime Miller when he was there. And then you had Izzy Schlapperbersky, who also passed away a few months ago, and then there was Alec Gorschel. Now, I'm just remembering, I'm just thinking this from memory now, and Alec Jaffe. Alec Jaffe was very involved in soccer. And then there were, and then there came Alf Woodman, and then you had Max Neppy. Remember, Mr. Neppy, they used to call him Neppy from Jeppy. Uh, and then there was, uh, I remember, there was Elliot Kretzmer. He was a pharmacist. Elliot Kretzmer came from Kronstadt, and his brother wrote the lyrics 
for a very famous musical which has been running in London now for many, many years. Uh, it's called Les Miserables. That's Elliot Kretzmann's brother. And then we had David Neppy, the son of the late Max Neppy as well. And then we had Alan Gadd. And then we had Harold Rudolph. But it's not in exact order. Harold Rudolph in 1986 was the mayor of Johannesburg when Johannesburg was 100 years old because it was founded in 1886. And the Union of Orthodox Synagogues was formed and they brought out as a guest speaker a young rabbi who was the principal of the Jewish College in London and his name was Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. That was in 1986. And I'll come back to that in a moment. And then we had Les Dishy. And, and after him came, that, as, as I said, Ernie Maggot. And then we had Dr. Ben Susan, a famous photographer. And we also had um, Sam Moss. Now, do you remember Sam Moss was instrumental and was the chairman of what we call the Civic Theater? He was very, very, very involved. He was a pharmacist by profession. But, and he became chairman of what we called the management committee of the city council. And in those days, I can assure you, the city council worked. If you got your rates and taxes.